Irene Knox, thank you very much indeed for having me in your space. This is wonderful. You're very welcome, Rowan. It's great to have you in your library. Well, it's, look at the quality of light that streams through the windows here, for goodness sake. It, this, well, this, this space particularly is, is tremendous because we opened up, we refurbished this library, as you know, um, a short while ago, and we're able to open this up and create this gallery space, yeah, which is fantastic, yeah. I think, for artists. That's because been very the light well used. So it's booked up for the next two years or something. Yeah, it uh, absolutely is, yes. We, we have a huge waiting list and uh, lots of artists from, from the local area and further afield as yeah. well here have the opportunity to show their work here. And because it's on the, you know, it's facing the, the main street, yeah. so many people who are just walking past the library can yeah. have an opportunity to come in and to see. In. It's, no longer, it's no longer a, a dark and dingy place where people <laughs> peep out at you from behind rows upon rows of books on shelves. Libraries, libraries have changed hugely in the last yeah. 10, 15 years. Um, we, have to be, be, we have to make sure that our libraries respond to the society in which they operate. Mm. Um, and you know, lots of people who haven't been in libraries for years still have that traditional view that mm. you know, it's a very quiet place and, mm. and people are going to shush oh, uh, yeah. all the time. It's not like that anymore. Libraries are community yeah. spaces, they're community yeah. hubs. Yes, books and reading are still at the heart of mm. everything we do. But there's so much else as yeah. well. That's the thing. You can have your shh space Absolutely. upstairs in the, uh, in the special little corrals where people go to yes. study. And to yes, the, this, this library is on three floors. And one floor is a quiet area where people mm. can go and, and have that kind of space if they want. But elsewhere in the building, you have the gallery. We have a fantastic children's library. Computers with free internet access. Mm. Um, and we're actually going through a whole process at the moment of replacing all our IT provision. Wow. Which is going to mean that we're going to have much faster broadband. We're going to have Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi in every library. Um, and we're going to have creative labs where people can come in and actually create content. So it's a huge period of change for us. But it's really exciting times, I think, and, and libraries are very much part of their communities. I see, I see this clearly, and, but you're not too busy. You're not so busy as to be unable to respond to people like uh, uh, Macmillan. Mm -hmm. You're there here today with their coffee morning. Well, that's, that's part of being you know, a, a community hub, of being there in communities. Yes, we have uh, over 50 libraries at the minute that today uh, participating in the Macmillan coffee morning. Uh, it's part of raising funds for Macmillan uh, nurses who support people with cancer. Mm. Um, and our staff have been absolutely tremendous in libraries. Baking cakes last night, baking buns, yeah. bringing them in today. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of members of the public coming in, you know, making donations, which will all go to the Macmillan absolutely. Cancer Trust. And, and it's, it is about libraries also being social spaces. Yeah. And people having the opportunity to come in and enjoy that. I kind saw of the other day. I saw a man and a woman of a certain age in here. The man had straw coming out from under his hat. He was of the farming <laughs> class. Okay. And the woman was the sort of a lady in whom the thick part of the leg started at the ankle. <laughs> and he said to her, how are you doing? Are you enjoying the library? They fell in love on the spot. <laughs> oh, well, there you are. It's the isn't ultimate that, social space. Absolutely. And it's not the first time I've heard uh, yeah. of romance beginning wow. in the library. Over the books. Absolutely. Over, and that's not Behind the Behind the and, shelves. Thank God you don't do Mills and Boom or whatever. Oh, well, we Mills still do. Boom. We still prefer. Really? Well, oh, absolutely. Do people want that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. There are yeah. still people who, who uh, really like the romance. Yeah. So, but there was a wonderful experience. I was involved in it here uh, to do with mental health, mm. the reading of mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. And we read a book. And suddenly I found, after doing the reading, that people from the floor, uh, the place was packed, uh, who were in some way touched by the issue of mental health, started to engage. And suddenly stories started to emerge. This is what happened to me, and I, this is what I'm going home to. There was something happening that was very therapeutic, it was very good. Uh, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's what we call the One Book Project. Yes. Um, it's a big project that we're running. It's called Health in Mind. Um, and we have been working with four mental health charities right across Northern Ireland. Mm. And it's about giving people the opportunity to, well, it's really about helping people who have mental health issues or have had mental health issues and their carers and their friends and their mm. family to better understand what the issues are and to feel that they can share those kind of things. And because there's a huge stigma still around mm. mental health issues. Mm. And, and it's about helping to, to open up that whole discussion around mental health and that one book project what we did it was a very particular book um, 
which it was it was called the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry, mm. and it was about a gentleman, as you know, because you read yes, and, yes, from it. Yes. It was about a gentleman who left home to go, um, and he thought he was going to try and save yeah. a friend, and yeah. it was about his Mission journey. Mercy, a journey. Yeah. The it was journey. about his journey yeah. and about the people he met and about the yeah. issues in his life and in, in other people's lives. Tell me, if you would, uh, the, the the genesis of this kind of philanthropic mm. attitude within library. It's not what you were created for, but yet yeah. it is what you've become. But libraries have always, have always had a role, role in terms of, if you think back to when libraries, the free libraries started in the first instance, libraries were about helping people who couldn't afford education, who didn't have access to books. It was about helping those people to improve their lives. Um, and libraries are still about that because we have such huge issues around now in, in society, particularly given the time of austerity that we're in, mm -hmm. whereby people you know, can come into our libraries and use computers uh, and the free internet access, perhaps to search for jobs, yeah. perhaps to do, mm -hmm. work, do mm -hmm. um, applications online, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Libraries are about information. Uh, and that whole Health and Mind project is about making sure that the information is out mm -hmm. there and health in mind is also about reading mm. because reading is a very therapeutic exercise. Course, All the research shows that reading helps to <laughs> helps to relax people, the, it helps the, people to address issues and think about issues. In the different the ultimate the ultimate uh, tribute to reading is that invariably it doesn't help me address issues. I, I don't want that. Don't need that maybe. But what it does as I sit in the quiet light of the lamp at my bedside. By gum, it's some lullaby. <laughs> yes, and that's, and that's a wonderful part of reading. For, for everybody who does read, they, they do it, and they, it has a different impact on them. For some people, it gives them an opportunity perhaps to look at things in their own lives, which they can see almost by stepping back and reading about it in, in a book, you know, in terms of somebody else's life. Mm. Or it might be relaxing, or it might be about for example, we have lots of reading groups now that meet in mm -hmm. libraries where people will read the same book, they will come along, and they discuss will discuss it. it, they will discuss what it means for them, yeah. their own experiences. So reading is such yeah. it's it's almost, a sociable yeah, activity, absolutely. it's a relaxing activity, yeah. and obviously for children it's such an important skill. Yeah, of course, uh, and, that's and it's a skill that could be lost because with all this tweaking and twicking and twitching, <laughs> which you actually embrace because you must, it's the way forward. Mm -hmm. But I mean, children are losing the ability to, to structure sentences and to use language beautifully. It's different. Society's different now. Children are different. And as you say, as you say, yes, you know, I know from my own family, you know, children and, and their texting and so on. Mm. But, you know, if you think about it, reading is so still something that everyone needs to be able mm. to do. Mm. It's simply now that people are perhaps not reading hard copy books, but yes. they're going onto the internet. Yes. Or you know, they're downloading e-books and, mm. and that's something you can do from our service as well. Now we, we provide free downloadable services as well. So people still, children still need those skills and we work very, very closely with local schools to supplement what goes on in the school because all the evidence would show that children who enjoy reading and children who develop that love of reading, their literacy skills are so much so, better. Yeah. And if your literacy skills are good, then educational attainment and so your, your marketability well. becomes absolutely, superb. Absolutely, absolutely. You so, become a, a, a commodity that's sought after. Absolutely. But the other thing you do, and I'm very, very impressed with this, uh, the people, uh, sometimes the foreign nationals, our new European neighbours, people from Africa who come in mm -hmm. here, they're made so welcome. But libraries are welcoming environments. That's, that's what we're here for. Um, no matter who you are or what your background is, Libraries are not interested in that. Libraries are interested in people as individuals and in their communities. And our staff, our, you know, our library staff are absolutely mm. incredible people. I have so much admiration mm. for our staff who work in the branch libraries mm. because they're there to provide a service and they provide that service. And all the evidence that I get from customer surveys and so on, what people are saying is your staff are absolutely wonderful because they understand us, they get to know us, they, under, they, they get to know our families, they get to know our wants mm. and our needs, mm. and they make us welcome. And that's what libraries are about. We want our libraries to be welcoming. That's why we've created you know, comfortable spaces where people mm. can sit. Mm. We've created 
you know, lots of, lots of different, almost like living rooms mm. in the community where people can come. Because in many areas still in Northern Ireland, libraries are shared spaces mm. where you perhaps don't have other shared spaces in those communities. You, you, what you have done for me this morning in this, this few minutes of interview, you've actually demonstrated for me why you're the chief executive <laughs> of Library Northern Ireland. Oh, well, I hope you're so. enthusiastic. I love libraries. It's, it flows from you with the greatest ease. <laughs> I love libraries. I think libraries are such an important community asset. Um, and I started in libraries and I'm now in libraries. Thank you for coming in. It's you're been very a pleasure, Owen. Thank you. All the Thank best you. To you. Thank you very much.